In this video, we are going to be setting up an Orange Pi Zero. And so to do that, we will be using a little micro SD card. I have an eight gig one here that is sufficient to hold the image that will be running the operating system on this guy. We also will be using a micro USB cable and a little USB uh, power brick to supply power to this guy. And then finally, we're going to be using an ethernet cable in order to allow devices on our network to communicate with this thing over the secure shell. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be walking through these steps to download the image and to prepare it up for this micro SD card. And then once we get an image, we'll put this on. And then from there, we'll be putting it onto our network. And I've got one right here. It will grab an IP address, and basically once it's got an IP address, you will be able to uh, move forward and start running commands on it. So we'll walk through all this, so stay tuned. All right, guys, so I have plugged my micro SD card into my computer. It's showing up right here as this eight gig thing, and it's currently crashing. So uh, let me just close Windows right now, uh, Explorer. And so basically my whole point here is that we can see that this is our micro SD card. It shows up as a USB drive, but it's not. Um, so just ignore that. But we know for sure that drive E is that micro SD card. So I'm gonna click on format and then I'm going to tell it uh, to keep the default FAT32 format and you don't have to put anything for a volume label. And I'm just gonna click on start. And so what this is going to do is it's going to erase the contents of this drive. And then um, in Windows Explorer, you can see that we have uh, this drive letter E corresponding to my micro SD card that is attached to this Windows machine right now. So now that you've formatted your drive, uh, if you go to the armbian.com website, and I'll provide a link to this in the description, uh, they have a page dedicated to the Orange Pi Zero. And so you can go here and scroll down, and I just downloaded the first uh, image right here. And it's important to note, this is not the image itself, it is a zip of the image, so you will need to extract it. So I, you can click on torrent or direct download, um, and basically once you do all that stuff, uh, inside of your downloads folder, um, what comes out, it is, uh, in our case, this one was 360 uh, kilobytes, or I'm sorry, uh, megabytes, and so um, it's a .xz format. So if you right click this uh, and then go to 7-zip and then click on extract to here, um, it's going to redo this and I've done it before so I'm gonna cancel that. But basically on your machine you would do this and then you would have this disk image file or a .img file present in your downloads folder of Windows after you do this. And as you can see that this is now a 1.4 gigabyte sized file. Um, so after you've done that, the next thing is going to be to take this image file and then load it onto that micro SD card that is in our computer. And we remember that the drive letter path is E. So um, I have the Windows 32 Disk Manager uh, installed. And so if I just run this guy, I'm clicking through yes, and I'm accepting the agreements. Um, this was a free program that just helps you put your image onto the uh, onto a USB drive or a micro SD card. I'm just gonna click on finish right here. Um, this guy will open up and it will ask us for where is our image file. I'm gonna close out the readme. So this image file is going to exist inside of our downloads. So if I click on this guy, you can see that it pulls up that image file that we extracted uh, in our downloads folder. And then I'm gonna click on open. And you can see that it's only recognizing drive E, which is our micro SD card that we've formatted already as the one that we can uh, move forward with uh, burning this onto. And so uh, that looks good. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on write and it's gonna write the image to our disk. So we're gonna click okay. And this can take a little bit of time. So uh, I'm going to let this thing do its song and dance and then we will uh, get back to the action. Cool, so we just finished successfully putting our image onto the micro SD card, so I'm gonna click OK. And then it's very important that after this completes, uh, our image is on that E drive, so I'm gonna right click it in Windows Explorer, and then I'm going to click on Eject. And now we can safely remove this from our Windows computer, and I'm going to plug this into our uh, Orange Pi right here. And then uh, I'll show you guys the next steps of getting this thing on the network so we can start issuing some commands to it. So stay tuned. All right, so here's our Orange Pi. Here is our imaged 
micro SD card. So I'm going to flip this guy over and then the micro SD card is going to go into here. So just like that. Now, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to come down to here. And it's gonna get a little messy, but basically I have my micro USB power supply and my micro USB power right here. So we're just going to uh, be plugging this guy into that little slot. Okay, and now we can see that little green lights on. And what I have, so this is my router, it's a TP-Link model, uh, is we're going to be plugging the ethernet jack into this guy right here. So again, plugging that guy in. So all we have is a ethernet jack, a micro USD, micro USB, uh, cable po providing power, and then we've also got our micro SD card plugged in right there with our image. So after you've done this, wait a few moments and your uh, device is now going to be obtaining an IP address from your router, which is a DHCP server on your network. So uh, we will now jump back to the Windows computer. All right guys, so now that our Orange Pi is on the same router as our PC, I went to my router's login page, which in our case was just tplinkwifi.net. If you had a different brand router, uh, this would be a different address, but you go to this page, you put in your password, uh, and then you can view uh, through this like network map tool all of the clients that are on your network right now. And so we can see that this is that desktop's IP address, and then we also have uh, an IP address right here uh, for the Orange Pi Zero itself, which is what we're interested in. So we're going to grab this bad boy, and then we're going to uh, open up Putty, and if you don't have Putty installed yet, you will need it. Um, but basically I'm going to uh, hit the start key and then just type in putty and we will run this app. And so basically what we want to do is just uh, on this very first page, we're going to paste in that IP address. Port 22 is the default port that you make SSH calls from. Uh, so we're not going to change that. And then we're just going to hit click open and it's going to tell us that this is potentially a very dangerous thing to be doing. Um, and we're going to say that's okay. Uh, and it's going to ask us what user we want to log in as. I'll try to make this bigger, I can't, um, but basically I'm going to log in as root. Um, this that is a built-in account that came on that image, so we're just gonna hit enter, and it's gonna ask us for the password, and that password is 1234 by default, and then once you plug this guy in, um, it will prompt us uh, to create a new root password, so, um, you know, let's do p at sswrd. Hopefully other people don't use that, p at w. And they don't like that. So um, we'll try something else. So they've got pretty, pretty big password requirements. If you get rejected enough times, uh, I think it just takes you to this page. Um, but hopefully you can come up with better passwords than I can. But the whole point here is that we have now established a connection to our Orange Pi on our network. So you could also be on a Mac right now or an Ubuntu machine, as long as you can SSH to this. Uh, so if I wanted to close out this window, I'm just going to close the session um, and open up PowerShell, I can, make this a little bit bigger, uh, ssh root at and then that IP address. And they still do not like the fact that um, we could have a man in the middle attack on my network. I'm okay with that. Uh, but that is it uh, for logging in. Um, something else I do want to show you guys real quick is we go back to putty and we go back to that IP address and we again log in as root. So it's taking us here. And they're gonna ask us uh, what type of default system command shell we want. So I'm gonna say bash. 
and we're gonna uh, basically create a user account and password. I'll call this admin. And you're just gonna go through these prompts to set up this stuff. Okay. Uh, and we're just gonna hit yes. And give it our time zone. So I'll say I'm in time zone one. Cool. And so we are now logged in as our user. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, just show that we can ping an external resource like google.com from our orange pi zero. And just like that, we're off to the races. We can also do stuff like sudo apt get update. And we can start loading in the most recent packages for uh, pa uh, stuff that we wanna run on this like pi hole. So, um, that is going to be topics for other videos, but thank you all for watching. And if you've made it this far, uh, congratulations. You now have a working orange pie on your network. So hope this is helpful stuff. Thank you all for watching again and let me know if you have any questions and be well.